China right now is in fact in a desperate struggle against absolute chaos. And chaos has already started to take hold. The Chinese dream has been shattered. You can't become famous. You can't become a billionaire. You can't rely on your investments or housing. Let's cut to the chase here. There's absolutely nothing that the Chinese government can offer the people of China anymore other than a very horrible controlled environment in which you can try to live as normal a life as possible, but you're not allowed to have ambition. You're not allowed to strive to improve yourself too much because if you do, well, you'll be dealt with. Something that the Chinese government is very good at is actually hiding what's really going on in China, not only from you and the international audience, but specifically from the people in China themselves. But what is it that the Chinese government has been trying to hide from you and the people of China? Well, we first have to understand the concept of hexie, which means social harmony. Social harmony is what the government strives for. It's how the Communist Party keeps control. They stamp out any unrest or civil disobedience whenever it starts to take flame, closely monitor internet chats, and if even a whiff of dissatisfaction directed towards the Communist Party of China is detected, chat groups get shut down, people get visits from the police, words and search terms get censored, and people get detained. Without this ultimate power to control what people are allowed to talk about or think, China would have fallen into complete chaos years ago. The Chinese Communist Party would no longer be in power. The thing is, the pressure is building and cracks are forming. There have been some incredibly bad and chaotic things happening in China, which although successfully swept under the rug in mainland China for the most part, have caught the attention of China watchers such as myself and the international community. China right now is in fact in a desperate struggle against absolute chaos. And chaos has already started to take hold. The first example I'd like to give you is this absolute daylight robbery that's happened with these regional banks in Henan. For those of you not up to speed, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You had these more or less small regional banks, which were tied to big Chinese government banks. So it gave people confidence that they wouldn't be swindled out of their money. People got a lot of confidence to invest in these banks because they offered really good interest rates and really good financial packages, great loans. You get the idea. So people flocked from all over the country, not just the people of Hernan, to open accounts and to deposit and invest their money in these banks. But what happened was that money was stolen. It was stolen by bad actors working for the local governments or for those banks, managers and people that were in charge, powerful businessmen, things like that. So the money was all stolen, taken overseas to go buy mansions in Canada or Australia, the usual type thing, all laundered out of the country. And so the money no longer exists. People tried to start to draw money out of their accounts, do bank transfers, and found that the internet banking sites were just basically shut down and said they're under maintenance. People started to get worried because they could not access their money and their savings. And I'm not talking about people that have got some crazy investment schemes or, or funny loans, just actual normal savings accounts. So if you had gone and put all of your money in this account because it gets good interest, and then you go to check on your bank balance and you see that, well, you can't even access your bank balance, you're going to start to get worried. This is your life savings after all. So of course, many people were distraught and tried to go to Hunan from the various provinces that they were in. Because like I said, it wasn't just local Hunan people, it was people around the country who'd invested in these banks due to their very high interest rates and so on. When people tried to go and protest and go to find out what was happening and confront the banks, a lot of them found out that their health codes had turned red. This is due to China's zero COVID policy. They have this ridiculous system that wherever you travel, you must present a green health code if you want to get on a train, get on a plane, access certain buildings, things like that. Well, that all turned red because, of course, turns out the local government in Hunan, all the cronies and everyone involved abused the zero COVID system and made all of these people's health codes turn red so that they could not travel to the city to protest. They could not leave their housing complex, never mind board a plane or board a train to get there to protest. So this was a complete abuse of the whole zero COVID system. A lot of people lost confidence in the zero COVID system because of this abuse. Because think about it. 
the government can step in anytime they want, make your code red if they don't want you going anywhere, if you're a nuisance to them, if you're a persona non grata. So it was very disturbing to see this happen. But you know what? People persevered and around about 1,000 to 1,500 protesters did finally manage to make it to Hernan to go stand outside these banks to hold up banners, which the banners were very worrying because, as usual, they were just blaming the local Hernan government rather than the central government. For some reason, they can't see that the two are exactly the same and are tied together and share the same responsibility, but that's a video for another time. The fact of the matter is about a thousand people did arrive. But what happened when these protesters all got there and started to unfurl their signs and, and try to demand their money back or access to their accounts? Well, they were met with violence. Mafia thugs were hired. obviously by the banks and the local government because they were working in tandem with the uniform police so they definitely were all in cahoots with each other appeared out of nowhere started to drag people away beat people up there was a lot of physical violence a lot of people got hurt but this is how the chinese government controls people you lose your life savings you want to go and protest about it and you're met with nothing other than this fly i'm gonna kill you if you don't but this is a very clear indication as to what happens if you try to pursue the Chinese dream. This is your life savings that you've deposited into a bank which has been vouched for by a central bank governing body in China connected to the central government. You go out there and you chant slogans like no deposits, no human rights, Hernan banks give us back our money, we're against the Hernan government's corruption, that sort of thing. What are you met with? Well. You don't get bailed out by the government. The government's not there to help you. They're there to suppress you. You become an enemy of the government. You become silenced, detained, beaten, and whatnot by the government. So you see, the veil suddenly gets lifted for these people, the people that have the utmost trust in the government, the people who believe in the Communist Party of China, the people who believe in the Chinese dream, get beat down. But the best is yet to come. Because you would expect that the local news would be a buzz about these protests in any way, shape or form, whether they're villainizing the protesters or they're uh, trying to seek justice for the protesters. You would expect there would be a lot of hoo-ha and uh, noise about it in the press. But no. What does the official Chinese government put out? Some weak fluff piece about how the street food in that particular area of Hernan is great and how wonderful it is that they have such great street food. Hmm. I'd like you to notice how everyone in these pictures posted by state media aren't happy. I mean, they're probably panicked and worried about what they're going to do since they've all lost their life savings. And this is maybe their last piece of barbecued meat that they can afford in a while. But this is how the Chinese government works. When something bad happens, they deflect. Nothing to see here. Everyone is happy. Stay ignorant and fooled into thinking that we're the best country in the world and we have the best economy and we're strong and amazing. Meanwhile, your life savings, as well as thousands and thousands of other people's life savings, have just been wiped out. In fact, I think the amount was six billion US dollars worth of people's money that they had invested in these banks. Something like uh, 40 to 50,000 people were affected at the minimum. All of these people lost their money. It's not coming back. But what does the news put out? Hmm, great street food. Everyone's happy. The thing is, people do discuss this, and awareness is raised about these things on social media through Weibo and various others. And although the government's very good at censoring this stuff, it still gets around. People still start talking about it. But if you start to talk about it a little too much, if you try to take it to a step where you start to criticize the government, that's when you'll get a knock on the door, you'll be silenced, you'll be detained, as has happened countless times in the past. This is one of the cracks, because this is having a knock-on effect all over. The Chinese economy right now is actually in dire straits. Although they put on this amazingly bold face to the rest of the world and talk about how the digital yuan is going to be the next big thing, the renminbi can become the next reserve currency, all this kind of nonsense, at the end of the day, 
If you brush past all the propaganda and all the nonsense and all the footage of the shiny cities and you look at what's actually going on in China, the economy is really in a terrible state. Let's talk about real estate. I did a video about ghost towns. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you do. It explains a lot because about a third of the Chinese economy is based on this crazy Ponzi scheme, this uh, real estate situation where people buy an apartment without having even seen it before it's even been built and they expect that they can sell it for a huge profit later to some other fool. And so they buy as many as they can afford and they find loopholes so that they can buy more than they should, more than their quota. And it's this crazy speculation thing that's going on and on and on. But now we're starting to see a massive downturn. Over 22 cities and about 35 projects all over China right now. People are refusing to pay their mortgages. This is the first time we've seen anything like this, and I'll tell you the reason why. Say you're a middle-income person, you've scraped together all of your family's money to put it down on an investment, on an apartment. And how it works in China is there'll be these brochures, they'll have a sales event for a new apartment block that's going up. People go in and they invest. They say, great, I think in this area, this new project is going to be good. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to put all our money down. We're going to get this fantastic apartment that'll be worth a lot of money that we can sell for a massive profit down the line. So they do this. They scrape their money together. They put down a huge deposit. They start paying the mortgage even before the ground is broken because they're paying off their debt for this thing. So you're paying for this thing, but it gets delayed. Not only does it keep getting delayed, but new projects start cropping up around the one that you bought that are now being sold for less than what you paid. This is what's been happening. Because the market is cooling down, apartments, new apartments just aren't selling. So the real estate companies are offering them at discounted prices in order to try and, you know, generate sales. So you've now paid something like 15% more for your property, but the one that's being built right next to it, which is exactly the same, by the way, is now being sold new for 15% less. So you see this whole situation. First of all, there's been massive delays due to the COVID lockdowns and also the, the whole um, real estate sector in China. Evergrande collapsing, all this other nonsense has really impacted the entire market. It's in a very, very bad way. So massive delays have started to happen. So you invested in this property, say, like two years ago, and they still haven't even started to build it. And now they're selling new properties, new um, apartments for less right next to yours. Of course, you're going to be annoyed. So people are just reaching a point where they're just not paying. And I believe they're doing this to try and pressure the real estate companies and the government or whatever to lower their rates to help them out in this situation. But the knock on effect of this is that it could result in something like $83 billion of bad debt. That's a lot of money. All right. And of course, the Chinese government can absorb that to some point, but it's really affecting everything. If the banks are creating these bank runs and stealing people's money, the real estate sector, which is a huge part of this economic engine of China, is starting to falter like this and people not paying their mortgages. These are signs of something very bad going down in the Chinese economy. At the end of the day, you would think that some of these things aren't that bad because as long as people can keep working hard and keep earning money, they can recover. And if they lose their life savings, well, they can, you know, it's a terrible blow. It's a disgusting thing to happen to anyone, but they can still keep going and they can still earn money back and they can still somehow survive. But that's not really the case. Unemployment is also a big issue in China right now. The zero COVID lockdowns have completely destroyed economies within China, Small, smaller economies and industries. We're dealing with a very bad situation. I know everybody's reached um, compassion fatigue at this point, when it comes to the whole lockdown thing, you hear about them happening, right? And by now, you're just like, wow, that's terrible. You know, I, I feel bad for the people that are stuck in their homes for like some of them up to four months now um, without being released. Some of them, they just got out of lockdown, now they're back in. But you kind of forget that it's a real thing. But new lockdowns are happening all over China right now. Big cities like Xi'an and Shenzhen, massive innovation hubs, uh, industrial hubs, Dongguan, all these places that produce so much of what the world consumes and give so many jobs to so many people, migrant workers and local people and, you know, that drive the economy. The factories are shut down because of zero COVID. 
Okay, people are stuck in their homes. There are only so many people that can actually support themselves and their families by doing some kind of work online. If you've got an office job, you know, if you're doing some kind of online, I don't know, training or whatever the case and trading and things like that, yes, you can work from home. But don't forget that the majority of people can't. The majority of people in China, they rely on the fact that they go to work in a factory, go to work the fields on a farm, go to go out there and do service stuff like be a waiter or a cook or whatever the case may be. And most of these people can't do their jobs. So where's the money coming in? The government's not just giving people money. The businesses can't afford to pay people when they're not working because they themselves can't even pay rent and are shutting down in many places. So this massive mistake of the zero COVID policy is damaging an already damaged economy and making it far, far worse for your average person on the street in China. Ask yourself this. The Chinese dream has been a somewhat of a knockoff of the American dream. I mean, they can't even call it something different, right? The Zhongguo Meng. But it's all about being able to become successful in order to stand up and raise your family and raise your standard of living above what it used to be. This is starting to revert. You are no longer allowed to be a powerful billionaire or an influencer. Look at Jack Ma. When did you last hear about Jack Ma? Look at any of the number of billionaires that are now either disappeared, detained, fled overseas, you name it. All of these very rich people are no longer tolerated in China. Look at what happened to all the big sort of listings of companies on, on the American stock exchange that were cut short. The Chinese government doesn't like this because they don't like people who have a lot of power and influence. Speaking of influence, influencers. Big influencers that were making waves around the world. Think about Li Zixi. Where is she now? I've made a video about that. She's gone because she's no longer in line with what the Chinese Communist Party deems acceptable. Look at the look at lipstick brother number one. He's gone too. This is no longer a situation where you can live out a dream and achieve something great become someone big, become someone rich, become someone famous. That is no longer tolerated in China today. In conclusion, the Chinese dream has been shattered. And just like the rest of the world is facing huge challenges at the moment, so is China. Do not make the mistake of thinking that somehow China has it all worked out or that somehow the Communist Party of China has a more stable and traditional method of governance. The only thing superior about the Communist Party of China is their ability to censor bad news and control what people are allowed to say and think publicly. And of course, to cheat the world with fluffy and false propaganda. Stay awesome, my friends.